Hello and welcome to this week's 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, science. Starting off the news this week, NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, mission launched this week. This is an exciting but also slightly terrifying test to see how difficult it would be to change the course of an asteroid. While a planet-killing asteroid heading towards Earth makes for a good movie and an awful bedtime story, the threat is still a real one, albeit an unlikely one. DART therefore seeks to test in-development planetary defence technologies that will be deployed in the case of a hazardous asteroid observed being on a collision course with Earth. DART is travelling to an asteroid that is not at all a threat to Earth, but still serves as a useful testbed for this technology, which will involve the incredibly complicated procedure of flying straight into it, which should hopefully change its orbit in an expected way. DART launched at 20 past 6 in the morning GMT on a Falcon 9 rocket this morning. In other news is a very intriguing study that very dramatically changes how we view one of the most iconic prehistoric mammals known, the so-called Siberian Unicorn, the Rhino Elasmotherium. Well, as it turns out, the nickname of Unicorn might be even more erroneous than it already was, as this new paper by paleontologists in Russia has found support for a much smaller, almost dome-like structure on its head, instead of the enormous horn that has usually been reconstructed. Now, to be fair, no horn from this rhino has ever actually been discovered, with just a bony bump present on the skull, and the idea that Elasmotherium in fact lacked a large horn has been proposed before, so it's not a complete surprise that there's now more evidence for its absence. This paper proposes that the inner surface of the dome was actually used in enhancing the animal's sense of smell, as it's composed of the expanded nasal bone, as well as proposing that a small projecting horn-like cornified pad was helpful in digging up soil to search for plants to eat. It's a strikingly different but very interesting reconstruction of this incredible animal and it'll be interesting to see what people make of it. And now over to Ben with- Thanks Doug. Also in the paleontology news this week is the exciting discovery of two new dinosaur species. The first one from southern Brazil is an incredibly unique find and represents the first toothless ceratosaur to have been discovered in South America. Named Berthosaurus leopoldinae, this dinosaur was, as I just said, a member of the ceratosaur theropods. Interestingly, it's not the first toothless ceratosaur to have been found, as there's actually a Jurassic-aged one called Limosaurus from China, which was toothless as an adult but possessed teeth as a juvenile. Berthosaurus, though, is known from a fossil that clearly was still not fully grown when it died, indicating that this dinosaur was potentially toothless for its entire life. Berthosaurus is Cretaceous in age, and while it is also a noosaurid, like Limosaurus, it diverged much earlier and was found to not be especially closely related. In addition to being toothless, Berthosaurus is very unusual for a ceratosaur in also possessing jaw tips with cutting occlusal edges, essentially a beak, and was therefore likely herbivorous or at least omnivorous, showing how divergent the noosaurids were from the general carnivorous ceratosaurian body plan, evolving some very different methods of feeding. It's a really great discovery and a very unique little dinosaur. What a fantastic animal. And finally, very quickly, is the second new dinosaur species of the week. Meet Colsonurus magnificus. This dinosaur is late Cretaceous in age and was discovered at a locality in the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, with the known fossils of the animal including neck and tail vertebrae, parts of the shoulder girdle, a humerus and a hip bone. While it's not the most complete fossil ever, it's enough that paleontologists were able to determine that this is an Alvarez saurid theropod, related to dinosaurs such as Mononychus and Shuvuia, but it also displays enough differences in its bones to be classified as a new member of the group. New Alvarez saurids are always interesting, it's nice to have another one. Back to Dog in the Studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time that we upload a video whenever that is.